Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Shit Talk and Banter podcast. Today's guest is Akin. He is a Tibetan monk and in today's discussion we talk about philosophy, ethics and we talk about why he wanted to become a monk as well. It was very, very enlightening. I know it sounds pretty cliche when you're talking to a monk, but honestly, it was amazing. So if you're down in the dump scene, you need some positive thought and some positive reinforcement, I would definitely give us a listen. Um, if you haven't already, if you could go onto my Instagram page and give me a follow, that would be amazing. And also if you could leave a like, a share, and also subscribe to the channel, that'd be great too. Enjoy the episode. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode. Today I'm joined by Akin Tenzin. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Nice to meet you. Thanks very much for uh, joining me today. Um, I really wanted to get someone on the podcast, like I said before, uh, to talk about philosophy and ethics and not what a better person than a Buddhist monk to come on. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so Akin, do you want to maybe... Uh, give an introduction to yourself first and why you uh, became a became a monk i was born in nepal in 1992 and why i'm becoming a monk is especially related with our traditional and i was born in nepal in 1992 and my father came from tibet and is our religious our traditional already related with tibet and uh, buddhism uh, so when i was nine years old i still going a uh, school that time and at that time my father thought that uh, I should know about our traditional and also culture and some of that thing I have to understand I have to learn so that's why my father sent me uh, in India in South India where I'm stay now and I study and graduate from here so in 2009 I became a monk from a uh, uh, South India, uh, which is situated in uh, Mysore, Belkopa, it's a monastery called Namduli Monastery. And it's a, usually it's famous to call him Tibetan Golden Temple in here. Uh, and so when I was nine, 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 year, nine years old, I just joined in Hmong and I completed my school at 17 years old. At that time, I have a choose that you still want to be a, be a monk or you have to take, um, give up that monk life and go on a normal life. So mm-hmm. I, that time I have, that time I choose a monk life that I enjoy. I understand a lot of things from the monk life and I still want to learn more about Buddhism. So in 18 years old, I joined our institute where we teach about a high Buddhist research center and teach about Buddhism in the philosophy and all of Buddhist histories and a lot of every other things in our institute. So I learn a lot of things from Buddhism, especially uh, the Nalanda traditional at the ancient time where the great philosopher who teach the commentary on Buddha's talk. so on that way, I learned a lot of things about the philosophy and especially the middle path or middle way. That is a very important in our daily life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in uh, 2018, I already completed our institute. It's for a long time. It's a, we have to learn for nine years year and then practice everything. And after that, it's already finished. And now for two years, I'm teaching in our college, our institute about Buddhism, especially on philosophy. Brilliant. That's amazing. That's so cool. I, 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 can't, uh, I can't imagine what, how it would be for someone like who's came from like a Western uh, upbringing, like to go and be a monk, because I've seen like a lot of people from the yeah. UK and America that come over and do it. And but obviously it might have been easier for you to just get straight into it because you were brought up in it your whole life. Yes. But uh, it's used to say like it's easy. And when you choose the monk from the child, 
It's something like when you choose the wrong life in the child time. That's a you. That's you not understand what is life that time, and you just go and learn everything. But when you like getting like adults, uh, when you get twenty years old, then our mind will be getting a change、mm. because of our environment and also a lot of things that happen to us. So that time is kind of the challenge things, and on at that time. Just try to learn, and that's something interested me in to learn about Buddhism more deeply. So still now I'm monk, and I do a lot of practice about the mind training, especially to focus to help other.、Uh, what I think about the dharma or like a philosophy or ethics that is more important to help other think about other and understand about other to other. If we do on that way, and that will be help our world for everything, every way to make world peace. Because we talk a lot of thing about a、uh, philosophy, and yeah, that is something, some kind of there's a different types of the philosophy、mm-hmm. in a, every own religions. So maybe that's also important. But、uh, what I think about, what I learn, and what I Realize that for me, from my understanding, the main thing is to help other and understand other. That、yeah. is the main philosophy for me that I learn. Yeah, I, I think that's important too. I、um, whenever I gr- whenever I start to become like a man,、um, I'm 27 years old, so me and you are roughly around the same age, and.、Um, Until like I was twenty five, I really was immature and like I didn't think about you know how to treat other people. Like it was all like selfish like tendencies, and and now like I I do still have some selfish tendencies, but um I do try and think about how my actions affect other people. Yeah. Um, you did mention as well that your father was exiled from. Uh, yeah, Tibet. was that because of the Communist Chinese Party back in the fifties,、yeah, sixties?、Yeah. Right. Okay.、Yeah. It, it, it's it, that, that whole story in itself is so sad that I mean the majority of people from your homeland were just pushed out. And so did your so you said that your father he's he went to India instead then, and that's where you've grew up most of your life. Yeah, my father still in Nepal, still、okay. live in Nepal, but he sent me in India to learn. To understand our culture, traditional, especially in Buddhism. Right. Okay. And、um, so you've you've made the choice of becoming a monk, and、um, you know, whenever you you're starting to come into your twenties, was there any adversity that you had to fight through to, you know, be dedicated to being a monk, or did you have like any other, you know, pulls from the outside world to try and take you away? Uh, for me,、uh, you're asking me about why you became a monk, or yeah. yeah. So, like, why you became a monk? But whenever you made the choice to become yeah, a monk, yeah. Yeah, was yeah. there any you know questions in your head where you were、yeah. thinking, "Is this the right choice?" No, for me, that time there's no choice. Like, there's I'm not making any kind of question. I just want to learn about it. But now I already understand maybe. Learn everything, maybe learn a lot of thing from Buddhism. And for now, what I'm thinking, now I'm choosing my way, and now I'm happy. I'm enjoying my monk life, and for my monk life, I want to dedicate my whole life to other,、mm-hmm. to show the way. What we make us happy, and also how we make. Self positive thought on a positive way, and how we can communicate with other and make world peace. So that is, I think, that's what I want to do from now, and still I'm working on it that way. And can I ask uh, the uh, the colors that you that the monks wear? So you wear the burgundy and the orange. What does that represent? Yeah, you know, actually, that's all.、Uh, 
like like uh, this orange and uh, like maroon color. Mm. Uh, so it's a actually it's a sign. That's actually when a Buddha, like a Siddhartha Buddha, when he became a monk at the that time, because um, before two thousand five hundred years ago, that time, like all kind of the saint or monk, they wear this kind of the cloth or robe on this color because it's like a, some not a good thing that's looking like not good so mm. when they wear kind of the robe they just pick from the like uh, like the from the like what to say from the dust or dirty things they yeah they they take from the another thing where somebody already throw so they not buy the new one, fresh one. They just use like a second hand. So, yeah. so that's and at that time they pick up that old cloth and they change the color in that in like a maroon color and orange color. And so especially there's no big uh, meaning why it's like orange and why it's like a maroon. And nowadays there's a um, many different colors in many uh, countries like some like also in the like little brown and most of the time there's a red and dark red so even in the buddhism there's a different traditional there's all uh, they all use a different color in their way okay i didn't know that i thought it might have meant something like to obviously to buddhists and mm-hmm. um, with buddha his his actual self I, I i thought that he was a god but he's not a god no he's a teacher yeah, <laughs> I always thought he was a god. <laughs> no, and like a, like you see, he is in my you know, all this stage of the Buddha. Yeah. So, so I'm not in the view of the Buddhism. We see the Buddha as teacher. Mm. In Hindi, it's called a guru. It's yeah. not a god. It's not a creator. It just show us the way how to how you can make self happy and liberate from suffering. So, that is a main yeah. So you so Buddhists wouldn't actually worship like statues of Buddha or anything. So like why is there so much like you know sculptures of Buddha and yeah. do, do you understand why I'm asking? Yeah, yeah, there's a, but they worship, worship the Buddha. It's a, like a, not something to expect or getting from Buddha. That we showing our respect and we always remind him that we can also be become like him. Right. We can okay. get lot, lot, lot of the positive thought, positive way that we can become like him. Mm-hmm. That's um, not something like to like a pray for something that we can get. Yeah. And yeah. with the teachings of, of Buddha, what would you say are the most important for you? Because Buddha already taught that Buddha, that his first teaching, he taught about the full noble truth and suffering, cause of suffering, and cessation and a path. That is, uh, that is something that related with the nature, some kind of interdependent. Like if there's a suffer, that is a, there's a cause because of the, there's a suffer. And if you want to liberate from the suffer, suffer, then you need that kind of cause to liberate from that suffer. So what we understand from that way, everything is dependent and everything is arise by their cause and condition. And what I, I want to say that if we want to be peace and happy in our life and what Buddha taught us, uh, don't, have, don't harm anyone and collect your virtuous things and, and defeat and clean your bad thought and bad thing. And that is, you know, uh, like a short way that we understand that that is a teaching of Buddha. 
Mm-hmm. And do you do you have like do do you not have many personal you know material things like you and have like a lot of stuff like is that one of the teachings of Buddha where he tries to make you not like be minimalist like you won't have like a lot of you know stuff material stuff like that. Uh, like um, what kind of material? So kind of like would he teach you not to buy a lot of things because you're trying to find happiness in this and you have to try and find happiness in yourself? Yeah. So, so happiness is not come something from the external thing. So it's on a depending our inner or special our thought how we think and in the text of the Buddha in a Dhammapada, everything is arise from our mind. What we think, what we create, that we will happen to us. So try to be positive in any way that will make you peace and happy in your life. And especially when talk about happy, Nowadays, we are creating a lot of things and like uh, luxury things. And that will be not enough for us that we can again and again collecting a lot of things. But we, it's not a fulfill our desire for that way. So contentment is a more important thing that make us happy. And how, I, I take it that you would become happy through getting rid of the negative thought by means of like meditation. So yeah, if I talk about the meditation, meditation is something, only the method to make peace, but it not make you totally happy. I always give one example, example that. I always give example on a bottle, water bottle, in which inside there's a lot of the scent, like mud. So I always give example that when we do meditation and focus on one thing, that time our mind will be calm. And that time our mind will be clear and it, we feel like we, we get happiness. It's a peace and happiness. It's calm. But our bad thought and our ignorance already in inside. And it's not totally re- removed from our thought. If there's a bad thought, if there is a, like kind of the affliction, kind of affliction thought, if there is an affliction kind of thought in our mind, when you get out from the meditation and go somewhere and meet someone. And again, you feel anger and other kind of thought will be arising. So what I'm saying that I'm give example on a bottle I already told you. So like there's a bottle in there's inside a water, okay? And also there's a sand. And when you shake it, the bottle, the sand was all come over the bottle and it's like around the surrounding it on the bottle. And when you take that bottle on the one table, slowly that all sand will be go down at the bottom and you see the water so clearly. But the sand is still inside the bottle. So again, when you shake it, and, and again, it will be so unclear. That's always sand is a, I'm going here and there. It's not clear. So our mind is also like that. So when you do meditation, it's like you take the bottle on a table and it's a make your mind peace. But when you shake it and your, your peace already go away from your mind. Mm. What I want to say that if you want to make the water clear in any time and any way, you have to take out that sand from the bottle. When you take out all sand from that bottle, there's only water. And whenever you shake the bottle, always there's a, you see the water clear. 
what I mean that meditation is just method to make peace. It's not make you totally peace, okay? So main thing is you have to remove your bad thought. When you remove your bad thought, and whenever you do the meditation or not, that's always happy and peace. So do you think that we, we can never be peaceful then? Yeah, we will be, we can. For that, we need to remove our bad thought on the negative thought. Negative thought makes us in a trouble we get a rise of problem. So we always try to be a positive. We have to arise a positive way. And, and also what I'm saying that even you try to be positive, but your habit will not change. So what I'm saying, habit, positive thought can change your negative thought, but positive thought totally can't change your bad habit. To change bad habit, you need a good habit. So what it means that uh, you have to change your bad habit, you need a good habit. So habit can change a habit and thought can change thought. Okay. That is a one kind of philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad that I like zoned in there because if I wasn't focused on that, that there at the end could have threw me off and I could have been so confused, but I understand. I do understand. Um, so we're, we're constantly in that, we're constantly in that state of, you know, push and pull, aren't we? Like yin and yang, like it's kind of, there's a bad thought there, there's a good thought there. So would you say that constantly thinking positively will outweigh the bad, the badness in your life? Yes, sure. It's totally right. Because why I'm thinking that is not only thought, it's not only some kind of logic, because it's all related with our nature. Because when you saw the seed of meditation, oh, sorry, medicine, like a plant, some kind of the medicine plant, we can, if we saw, if you saw the, some kind of the, Med, uh, med, uh, seed of the medicine and you you will get a medicine mm. but if you saw the seed of a poison you never get a medicine so that is a nature that is a, not some kind of logic so if you think on a good way it will happen a good if you're thinking a bad way it will happen a bad so there's a not a logic that is uh, some kind of the cause and effect. Mm -hmm. That is a law of cause and effect. And how, how many, you know, how many hours in a day would you spend meditating yourself? Yeah. I do 30 minutes, no more. Because what I'm focusing, and especially when we learn that in our institute, especially focus on a study, focus on a philosophy. Like a study about uh, uh, philosophy and also the nature, that's also important. We are not only study, we also debate on about what is it and what is it not, what he, it actually, what he actually said about. So meditation is only a morning time. Mm -hmm. And at the meditation, I'm not only focusing on, on a, one thing. I'm focusing on some kind of the we talk about bodhicitta to think about other, not for self. Like we all are same from any way. We all are one happy and no one want sad and unhappiness. So from that way, we all are equal. So we see on a that way and, and then I do some kind of meditation that all sentient being or human being will be happy. 
and always be happy and no any can be suffer so that kind of meditation and and also after that what i'm thinking and what i'm doing there what i'm learning what i'm gaining from knowledge that is everything for other to help on their life to get a happy life meaningful life and if you come across adversity yourself if a struggle or challenge comes your way how do you deal with it yeah sure that's a good question for me because in life we face a lot of problem and what i'm saying and something it's like just kind of a philosophy like a theory when it's come on a practical it's difficult to do yes and advice is only in a mind and when it's come in a practical everything is changing so i also get a lot of problem and face a lot of problem in my uh, past time from that way i i not worry about that when we when i face a problem because what i'm thinking like if i can't get what i think and i'm not worry about that oh slowly everything will be fine okay everything will be changed that is a good method to calm our mind at that time you can't uh, sit on a meditation because that time your only positive positive thought will be changed that kind of negative mm. and also some of the person asked me that how to control ourselves at the moment when it happened like when you fight or some anger to you so that is not happening when it's a come at the moment we can't control ourselves we have always need to prepare for everything yeah if you not prepare for anything and when you uh when you face the problem that is difficult to handle but you can learn a lot of thing from that and later you can change yourself mm-hmm. for anger kindness is a very important thing to change your anger that is some kind of antidox of the anger you think about to other that all will be happy all will be peace and you want to be uh, you want that all sentient being will be happy so that is the main thing to uh, what's uh, what kind of avoid your anger and your mind will be peace and when you when you meet some other person who already like a uh, anger to you that time you will be peace because you want to be that person will be happy so you don't be criticism that with that person so i think that is a good way and i do that kind of practice so for my practice always think for other to be happy so even i get if meet some person if somebody uh say something bad thing and i don't care i just smile to them and i just go <laughs> away <laughs> yeah. i think that's very very important so you're you're saying be prepared for those types of situations yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you'll be yeah we, yeah that's yeah, preparation is very important for anything even yeah. you if you if you if you never learn how to drive a car and you just get in a car and you start to drive it's not possible to you that you cannot drive yes yeah. because you're not prepared you not learn it doesn't mean that you have uh, you have to learn everything like a, when you uh, like a war some kind of in an instant that they uh the use of sword and if you don't know how to use a sword and you go in a war in a battle and what happened you will be die you don't know how to how to save yourself yeah yeah you yeah, are like that like the anger when you some person uh, you are talk a lot of things to you and if you don't know how to control yourself if you are not prepared yourself and you will start to fight you can say a lot of thing like yeah some bad words to them <laughs> so what i'm saying that everything is like a preparation so what preparation is like just you need to do a five minutes and always that is not a kind of the meditation that is a mind training Medi- mm. mind training is more important than meditation we're not doing a mind training mind training is just 
like a good thought and positive thought. Because positive thought will be change your negative thought. If there's always a negative thought, and you will say always negative, you know, another way. If you are positive, and you will say always there's a positive way. Beautiful. I love that. Um, do you think, like, as a society across the whole world, that we are too caught up on time? Like, caught up time means? Yeah, like, so do you mean, like, what I mean is, do you think that we place too much importance on time? So, like, things in the future rather than living in the present? Oh, uh, we give a lot of time that's important. We make uh, time is very important. Actually, time is important. We should know about time is important. But we should know how to use that t- time. Okay? We have to know the time is important. But more important is how you can use for that time for self or other. And what I'm saying, what I'm always saying that if you want to make your life meaningful, it doesn't mean that you can spend every time to gain money and luxury and some kind of that thing. You can get a lot of things. That's not makes you a meaningful life. Meaningful life means you have to gain your necessary thing in your life. And also you can help other, those who don't have, those who can't do anything. And when you help and when you provide that thing to other, and some kind of that when you getting old and you think about your past early life and you do some good thing to other and it will make you happy. It's not also in this uh, like just a moment. Also, in when you getting old, that will make you peace. And we see a lot of the poster and quotes nowadays in the social media. And when we die, we can't take anything with us. We just go alone. So, so dedicate your time, not only for self, for others. That is very important and that will make you happy. And also I think that the world, we need like that kind of thought and that kind of habit, that kind of action. Yeah. So time is important. We have to know time is important, but most important is how we use that time. And I wanted to ask you a question about uh, about the Buddhist monk. Uh, this is totally off topic about philosophy. Well, kind of could be um, put into philosophy. Uh, but the uh, the monk, I, I think I'm pronouncing this right. So he was from Vietnam. Uh, the Burning Monk, uh, Thic Quang Duc. Is that how you pronounce it? Thic Quang Duc. He was the uh, the Buddhist monk who who burnt himself during the Vietnam War. Oh, well, sorry, I not I don't know about him. Sorry. So yeah, so yeah. this this monk burnt himself um, in protest to the persecution of the Buddhists in South Vietnam because the leader in South Vietnam, DM, he was persecuting them. Uh, because he was Catholic. And I just wanted to ask you the question, you you don't even need to know about him, but why would, why would someone burn himself for, for others, if that makes sense? Like, why would you put yourself through that much pain for others in protest? Yeah, like, uh, yeah, we see a lot of that kind of self-burn uh, in, uh, like uh, you told me that, uh, that the Vietnam monks, and also it's happened in Tibet, that there's a, more than 100 people, they burn self, self-immolation in Tibet. That's a many kind of reason. Uh, but uh, I think that that's a, some kind, they can't bear themselves. Mm. They can't control self, that the emotion. Because we should know that our life is very precious. 
And when they do, I not say that is a bad thing or, or they have also the feeling for their own country or their own religion or something like there's many kind of reason will be related, but I don't know. But I'm not saying that they should do like that. I'm saying that every life is precious. And nowadays, that is some kind of happening uh, in a teenage or adults. It's not a burning as themselves, but they do suicide when they can't control. They don't know what to do. When they complete their, uh, their school, their college, their graduation, and they don't know what to do. And also some person stuck in the business and, and they can't control themselves and they don't know. That time, our mind is so powerful then. That's why I'm talking that mind is very powerful. If you change your mind and body is just like us, like a slave, they're just controlled by our mind. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying we have to make always a positive way. We have to choose a positive way. And for that self-burning. So we should know our life is very precious. If you don't know the life is precious, then they can do anything. And also for that kind of person who doing that suicide and self-burn, don't be too much go on a feeling. Feeling is a blind. They can't see anything, good or bad. They just feel. And when you go more deep of feel, after that you can't control yourself and you can't be a, if it's like so hard. It's not only um, on a business, not only in education, also like a, when, when some like a boy and girl, they do love. And after that they go in so deep of feel, they can't be yourself and when they, um, when they go different way and that will be hurt. Mm. So what I want to say that we have to control our feeling. Control is blind. Oh, sorry. Feeling is blind. Just a blind. They don't know anything. We have to control our mind. We have to aware always how our feeling is going. So self humiliation self-burn, and suicide, all things happening from their feelings, not, of thought, not come from thought. And for that, we should know our life is precious. Yeah. And with, with coming up to that, I know that was kind of, you know, off topic. I, I just wanted to... to yeah, sure, you can, you can ask me anything. It's okay for me. If I yeah. can, I ask you. <laughs> if I can't, um, then I say that i don't understand yeah no that's that's perfect thank you for answering um I, I suppose my last question is do you ever you know feel like anxiety or any of those types of feelings even because I, I i know that like monks are obviously i, I kind of put like monks on the pedestal i think that they are you know they're above human beings for some reason i don't know why i just think yeah, yeah. these are very enlightened and that you have strong moral principles and you're very focused but like surely you obviously like i said you are a human being so you still feel the feelings that we have so yeah. like what would do you ever get like any like anxiety or like stress or anything like that yeah i told you already that we all are same i my clothes, is, my identity is different that I, uh, I trim my hair and I wear a rope that color is a maroon and orange. And I shave my beard and mustache, all that <laughs> you have. <laughs> <laughs> so other thing is nothing different from the other things like we all the same. And and what I'm doing, just trying to be on a positive way, just use that as principle, that approach to make me on a positive way 
MVPs. Yes, I also feel some time in anxiety and stress um, work. It's not like that if there's a monk, they're already in light. We are just a practitioner. We are still on the way, just trying. We are just trying to be a better one. And when, when I feel, when I get some stress or anxiety, so main thing is for me that we never lose our hope in any way, in any situation. And also that everything will be changed. That is the most important thing that we have to keep in our mind. Only that two things will be changed your way, your stress, your anxiety. And also what I'm saying that hope is something like a bread. Without bread, we can't live. We can't stay every second. We have to take a breath. Mm. And hope is also like a breath. If you lost your hope, it's mean if you it's mean you lost your breath. That's why the modern day, a lot of the adults they do suicide. Not because they don't have breath, because they lost their hope. When they lost their hope, they don't say anything themselves. And they just see the best way that they have to do society. So in any situation, any kind of problem when you face, you should never lose your hope and also think that everything will be changed and it will be better. And also we can see now this, there's a one, you already know the, what is his name that Victor Franklin, this book, The Man, uh, Man Searching for Meaning. Yes, I've read yeah. it. It's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, why he survived on that way? That's only the big thing. There's a hope. Mm. So hope is something like a breath. And still you face the problem. That time you have to think that, yeah, everything will be changed, but you should be patient and be in a positive way, that will be change your negative. And what I'm saying when we get a problem, we don't have to focus on a problem when it happened. When you drawn in a, some kind of the mud, you know, like a, uh, like liquid mud, when you drawn in some kind of mud and still you focus in the mud, how I drawn in that kind of mud. And you don't know how to, how to get out from there. You're just focusing on there, there, how I can do. And slowly, slowly, they go down and down and down. Yeah. And at that, and you are not there. So even you are in a, that situation, we always have to focus on the matter and solution. Even you are in a problem. Even you are challenging the problem. Even you are in a, even, even you get a anxiety, stress, all of that thing that you don't want and, and you don't want to do. So always be a hope and try to focus on a positive way, even if you are in a bad situation. That is a good thing. That is a, one of the main things that we need, not only in a mom life, in also all the women being, and it's necessary for the daily life. Because a lot of person, they don't have a job and they don't know how to do, how to survive their life. Yeah, there's a lot of problem. And mm. when I do in a chart, live chart in Insta, there's a, there's a lot of the question about like, like a job and also like a stress, anxiety. And my, my, what kind of my experience or my speech, my talk is always about anxiety and every kind of death, we need a hope mm -hmm. and positive thought. It going to be in a positive way. Amazing. That's a good, uh, that's a good way to finish. I think positive thought and hope we need that the whole time. Um, 
I can, do you have YouTube or any other social media handles or is it just Instagram? Yeah, actually still uh, I'm uh, talking in Tibetan in our native language okay. because I'm Tibetan and I'm, I'm teaching always in Tibetan, not in English. I just try and you I have just very good start. English. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I just start in English and just in Insta. And maybe later, but uh, uh, now I'm actually I'm active in uh, YouTube and Facebook and Insta. Okay, good. Uh, but, yeah, but YouTube is just in Tibetan and maybe not other people understand this language. Yeah. And yeah, maybe I will soon start in another language in English also. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, well, listen, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to, to talk today. And um, I would definitely love to have you on in the future. So thanks very much. Yeah, thank you so much to talk with you. Yeah, very nice question. And I'm <laughs> really happy with your question. And sure. And I just, uh, I saw you that podcast. And that's very interesting. Yeah. And I hope that other women also enjoy your podcast. And you have to make more uh, about, um, yeah, and talk with other in a different field and different kind of thought that mm -hmm. will change our world. Yeah, yeah. nice. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. <laughs>